So you've got a leaky outrigger and it's way in there where you can't reach with your hands. There's a right way to take this apart and get to it, and there's a wrong way. For the sake of saving time, this is the, the best, best way, way to, to get, get to, to the, the other side, side of those fittings that you can't reach from the observation plate. You're gonna wanna pull this whole slide out. Now we've only taken out the end part of this slide, but if you were to take this out, then you can actually get to the fittings on the end of the piston. You can get to the fittings midway or towards this side of the cylinder you can also get to this chain link thing that guides the uh, hoses to go straight in and straight back to re-snap these in because they will pop out and that's what happened to us when we try to spin things and you can get to all these hoses this is the way that i would recommend trying to tighten up uh hoses that are on this side of each outrigger and to do that you need to do this first these right here are locks they're uh, grooves they prevent the outrigger from extending out beyond the point of where they're supposed to extend that's why it says extend to mark um, to prevent this from sliding out there's brakes or uh, wire plates one goes bolted under here and there's five bolts one two three four five those five need to come out there's also two bolts on the side wire plates and there's a wire plate on this side, which we did not even have to remove. But if you wanted to remove that wire plate, you would actually access it from this panel and you can get to the bolts on that side. But there's enough room in there to where you don't have to on our model. Don't, that's not a, every model's not the same, of course. So look out for that. Um, this right here is another friction plate. This is supposed to wear out faster than the metal. Keeps it structurally sound. And, uh, yeah, that's the right way to come about these leaky hydraulic uh, cylinders inside of your outriggers. However, there is an alternative way. You can actually try to pull the outrigger piston out, that hydraulic ram out, like you saw at the beginning of the video, and bring it out through the opposite side of where the pads come down. And what it is, is these fittings in here, because things are moving all the time, they get loose. And there's a loose fitting right there and it was a pain in the ass to get to there's no twisting or it'll pop out um that keeps everything in line but once you um take off um take off these two bolts that are actually holding the back end of the piston the three hydraulic lines that all connect back here two here one on the which was technically the top and then uh four bolts on that side this cylinder was able to slide back up until it got to this point to which we had to twist it to get it to come past that plate so we could even reach these fittings here to tighten up so now that we've got those fittings tight we're going to push it all back in but just be aware that if you do this you can't just pull it all the way out uh, it's all connected here still but it allowed us to be able to access those fittings you can't reach far enough in to actually reach anything so I don't know if they have special tools for this job or what, but uh, with the tools we have, it was just a nightmare and nobody made a video. If this video was at all helpful, subscribe to me and Johnny's mechanics page and uh, let us know if you have any tips or tricks and uh, we would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. A quick note, when using straps, you want them to go counter each other so that way if they're both wrapping the same way, when you lift, it's going to twist this. And we don't want that. We want it to be competing against each other. So that way it stays square and flush. When you go to put it inside of the sleeve here, it fits right in. And it's not tilted like this. That's all I got to What we have determined is that it's an O-ring that went bad. There were two of them on the fittings for the hoses. So now we're replacing the O-rings. Yeah. Inside. Right in there. There. And uh, needless to say. Right there. It's pretty awkward working on it. Yeah. 
but somebody has to do it. The pay is well. <laughs> and the pay is you get to go back to work with the crane. Yeah. And that makes the crew happy. And safe. And safe. And the boss man gets happy too. The boss man's happy too because the work goes faster. And cleaner. And the money goes faster. I meant the work goes faster. Less, less problems. The good thing about all this, Dad, was park-wise, we only spent like 30 cents. <laughs> yeah, we had the O-rings actually in an assortment kit that I probably bought two years ago. So, long-term investment. Yeah, finally paying off. Paid off, yeah. Now, the labor is where it's going to get you. The labor is bad. Unfortunately, the labor is performed by the owner's son, so typically that's free. Discount labor. It's discount labor. Yeah, Sla slave labor. <laughs> Instead of 120, you just about $60 an hour. Yep. No. Well, ring power would have been 160 an hour. What? For, for them to come here, yeah. 120 at their shop. Might, might even be 140 now. He said it was like 190, but I don't know. 190? Could be. He said, he said that he was going to do it himself for like 120. Because he sees how much they're making. And I'm thinking like, dude, you don't have gantry trains. You don't have the tools you really need to do this kind of stuff. Who was that? That kid, Blake. The mechanic. Their mechanic. That was Blake. Oh, Blake. Fire him. Blake, he's the service manager for Ring Power. I think it's all downhill from here. As long as all them other O rings are good. <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to turn this off. Yeah, go ahead. The tip on getting the wear plate back in there is uh, you can't just slide it in there and get it right. So what you can do with the wrench, holding it up like so, you can slide that piece in there like that. And that's how you get it in there. Sorry, I'm doing one-handed literally. So if I can do it one-handed, you can do it two-handed, guys. Just saying. See how it lines up almost? I can get it.